Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode, another episode on the Hermitcraft Amplified server. Oh yes, we are back again and in between episodes I have been doing a whole lot of nothing. That is right, I have been spending a ton of time doing absolutely nothing, just standing around. Standing around, looking into the abyss, not doing anything at all. And it'll all make sense when I open this chest. Aha! Look at all those slime blocks! That's right, I've been AFKing like crazy here on the server for slime blocks for a project that I want to do for the longest time now. And finally, we have enough slime blocks to do this crazy project. And you're probably scratching your head thinking, what on earth could you do with so many slime blocks? You're going to find out real soon. There's a special property this slime block has that I think is a little bit overlooked and not thought about too much. And we're going to take advantage of it and know it's not the bounciness at all. So, we have to head over to Hermit Frills because it's going to be for a mini game. But before we do that, I wanted to uh, show you something over in the Mesa biome. Our friend Efo on the server loves to play with TNT. In his video, he's talking about not having enough TNT. So I've been getting him some right here and I've been harvesting some sand. If you don't know me by now, I like to harvest sand. I like to grind for the materials, do some mindless digging from time to time. And I was in the mood, so I went over there, got some sand, and we're going to go over and see the progress of demolition in that area. And you're probably thinking, what on earth you want about progress of demolition? Well, if you saw my last episode... Uh, last episode? No. <laughs> that is not the word I was looking for. Uh, base would be the word. My last base on the last Hermitcraft world. We dug out an entire desert for as far as you could see. That means we got rid of all the sand, we got rid of all the sandstone, we did it about over a year, I think. And it was amazing when it was finished, but I love just, you know, mindlessly collecting resources, so I was happy to do this. And obviously I like, you know, watching the terrain change over time. So we're going to go over there, I'm going to show you just how much sand has actually been mined from the area so far. It's uh, quite a lot, and things are steadily changing around here. Spoiler alert, actually you've probably seen this already, I know XB does pretty much like a video every other day here on the server. This is XB's Never Hub entrance. We really need to get on doing this. I am actively working towards having more time to dedicate to Hermitcraft at the moment, and when we can do that, that means I can start work on the hub. But for now, we're going to be doing a different project. Anyway, uh, we're going to go over to the Mesa biome, I'll meet you over there. Here we are in the wonderful Mesa area. If you haven't seen this before, it's an area we've designated for demolition. If you look up there, you can see there's all kinds of crazy uh, removal going on, including the Klingon. <laughs> and uh, if we drop down here, we can go and see what's happening down below. And if my computer starts making crazy noises with the fan, that's what you're probably hearing in the background. I don't know why, but it just started accelerating the fan speed, which is a little bit worrying. And by the way, I've actually bumped my FPS up in this game to 120 and with it like that it seems to record at a steady 60. So the video should be a little bit smoother than usual. Anyway, let's talk about the progress that we've made. So we've cleared up like all of this area going up to the hills, going around the back there. And last time I was over here I was mining in this area and if we have a look around the side you can see other people have been mining away the sand. It's gone all the way against the uh, the clay over on the sides here. All the way down to the edge over there. All of this area that we're looking at has had the sand removed from it. It's absolutely crazy just how much this stuff we use on the server. I guess everyone's kind of into the big building style so it makes a lot of sense and I wanted to bring you over here and just show you what's going on. Now Biffa is over there in the background. He's not actually on at the moment. I'm the only person on. It's very early in the morning. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I get up early in the morning. I've actually been doing other things. But it is earlier in the day. And uh, over here, Biff has been working on his um, his farm. And I wasn't planning on actually going over there and having a look at it. But I might just tell you a little bit about the concept. Then you can go over and check out what Biff is doing if you're interested in it. So what he's doing is he's putting nether portals down there. Because on the inside area of the nether portals... And by the way, these things are massive. If you look at where my cursors are, you know they're the biggest size you can make. On the inside is where the Guardians spawn, on the outside is where the Squid spawn. And what do Guardians do? They go and attack Squid, so they'll track them through the portal, and they'll swim over to it, and then they'll go through to the Never, so you can collect the Guardians on the other side, which I think is extremely clever and a really awesome farm idea. Can't wait to see it when it's finished. But anyway, that's the progress of this area. I'm now going to have some fun mining myself out some sand while I listen to some music, and then we'll craft ourselves some more TNT. So some of you may recognize this place right here. Gotta say, jungle and amplified crazy mix. I'm going to have a little explore around here. Massive lag spike. Don't know what that was, my computer or the game. 
Who knows? Anyway, I've left him a chest over here and I felt like being a little bit trolly. I am not responsible for the destruction this chest causes. Now, before he opens it, he'll probably see um, that it's a trap chest, but that is not going to do anything. However, I've decided to put down some gla uh, grass around the back here and then I'm going to put down a little sign underneath it. So now when we open the chest, that will actually fall down. If he doesn't see that because there's gravel nearby, that's why I picked this spot, uh, then we'll troll him a little bit. So I'll leave a sign down here with a uh, one of those faces right there just to say that I'm joking and maybe that'll catch him out. I'll we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, there we go. Loads of TNT. Not going to open the chest again. That'll set it off. So let's head back out of here. The portal's just over this side, I do believe. And there's a bone on the ground. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Awesome. All right, we're over here in Hermit Frills, and I found a little location I think is going to work out. This little space right here I think is kind of optimal. It might be a little bit small, but we might be able to put this game right here in the middle. And for now, I am going to keep you guessing once again. Yes, it's going to use slime blocks. I'll give you another hint. We're going to be reinventing an old game with these right here. A very old game for Minecraft that some of you may or may not know about. I don't know, it's not so popular anymore, so... You know, some things get forgotten about, but this location right here is ideal because we've got space for a building down below and we've got space up above to jump into the game, which is the way uh, the game will start. So somewhere around here we'll have like a, a ladder to start off with or maybe a minecart ladder like we got on Lily Drop. So you can get up to the top, then there'll be a path to go to the starting area and then you'll drop down into the game down here. There's also going to be some stuff underneath the game as well, so it looks like we've got plenty of space for that. But you may be kind of wondering just where exactly this place is in relation to everything else. So although I've shown this area, let's just wander back over there. There is the Hermit Frills sign. The entrance portal is right inside this bit of space right here. So we don't want to go too close to that and things get changed up in the future. And this space back here is needed. But somewhere around here is what we're going to build. Uh, where we're going to build the game, if that even makes sense. So let me get prepared and then I'll show you a little bit more of this. So unfortunately our location is not going to be suitable. This is the way to get back to this area and I've been doing some measuring. This thing is not going to fit in this area. It's actually massive and I think being in creative mode and flying around something it makes it feel a lot smaller than it is. So it's not going to fit in this space right here. This is me measuring diagonally. So one, three, five. This thing is like a, a big square. So then I went over into this space and I thought aha we'll put it over here. Nope, this isn't enough either from there over to there. And bear in mind, we're measuring a diagonal for a square. So, you know, in this direction there's space, but in this direction over here, you can see we go right into the side of the mountain. So, moving around, and bear in mind, I'm going to clear up this horrible, ugly mess of cobblestone I left behind me. Uh, this area over here, once again, just not big enough. We'd have to cut into a bit of that mountain if we wanted to push it back in that direction, and it just takes up... A lot of space as it comes over here towards the logo. So then I was thinking, right, we're really going to have to go away from where I was uh, originally planning on building it, which is this side, over to the opposite side to look for some space. And there is enough space. This bit right here specifically, as you can see, that is the whole 24 blocks across that this thing needs. So it really is a massive square. I think I've done it again. I think I put myself right in it because this thing is going to be a lot bigger than I anticipated. But we can fit it in right there, and I feel like this comes kind of close to Mumbo's area, so we're probably going to shift it back a little bit and over in that way a little bit, because it's close to the basketball thing over here. So with a little bit of terraforming, we can uh, build this. But actually, as I walk back, perhaps this back area right here would be good. Considering that I need to build something under it, then having that space already dug out would help. So maybe, you know, if we build it in this dip down here, but we build it a few levels up, then that would be the place to go. So I'll find out. And uh, yeah, we're going to move, well, I'm going to get rid of the cobblestone, we're going to move our supplies over here and build the foundation of this thing. And I think this is going to be the optimal place, but I'll let you know. So I think we can all agree at this point the guessing game has gone on for long enough. I've just started put, putting down the framework for this, and there's a little bit of a story to tell about what we're building. So, over here is a bunch of slime blocks. This is actually a stack in cubic form. And it doesn't take up a large amount of space compared to, you know, the size of this area over here. So now you know why we have so many stacks of this stuff. But anyway, there is an old game called Spleef. That's right, Spleef. Some of you are going, oh, I know what you're going to do now. Yes, you can punch the slime blocks like this in survival mode. And that is perfect for Spleef. Instant mining. And yes, some of you will point out that you can use beacons and stone and stone generators. But I really like this. It adds something bouncy to the game. 
you know, you've got to place down all of the blocks before you play, but then you can instantly remove them like this, which I think is really cool, and I thought it'd be nice to try this, doing it different from the traditional way that you do it in survival. So we're going to make use of that instant mine ability with just your fist, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a game of Spleef. So I showed this to the staff on my server the other day after we had a game of UHC, and everyone seemed to really like it. It seemed like a lot of fun, and we played a couple of rounds. We kind of figured out an optimal size for this game, you know, the size of the uh, slime blocks that we're going to be placing in the middle of it. And then when I came back on the next day, someone had built a lovely little arena for this thing. Now, I have no idea who built it, and I really do appreciate that they did, because as soon as I saw it, I was like, that would look so cool in Hermit Hills. And it just so happened that I had no time to get prepared and design something myself. I did try, and I'm in a very uncreative mood at the moment when it comes to building in terms of aesthetics. So I was really happy that someone did that. And I don't know who it is, if you're watching, thank you ever so much. Your design is very, very cool. I really liked it. I think it's going to fit in very well here in Hermit Hills, and we're going to recreate it straight away. So this is the base platform. This thing is massive. We're going to start off by filling it in with some grass. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. I've got Silk Touch with me. We'll probably fill this up with dirt, and then I'll put down a few blocks of grass in it so it can spread. But we're basically going to be building what looks like a little hobbit hole kind of thing, like a little mound with some big circular windows on the side. It's going to look amazing, so uh, I guess I should just start building this so you can see how it's going to look. So, some new things are happening. I can't use the gold farm at the moment, so I came over here to the end, and this is our new spawn location. I like it. There appears to be cauldrons up here. I'm not really sure what that's for, but loving this colour scheme, actually. The grey, the purple, the obsidian and the quartz go together really quite well. And uh, I'm curious to see what's up here. I have no idea what server what to expect. Okay, it looks like we've got ourselves a rail station right here. What were those cauldrons for? So this goes up to here. Okay, that's a little jumpy pad. Let's use it. Up we go. Okay, so that's how we get out. We've got an enderpearl delivery system. Oh, maybe Tango did all of this, and I've just forgotten completely that it's been done. So where are those cauldrons? They were definitely cauldrons. I don't want to look at those guys. Are they underneath the snow or something? I'm probably not going to be able to find them. Let's see. So they're down there. What are they for? Oh, maybe it's lighting. Yep, it's probably light above it. In fact, I'm going to break one and have a look. Except I don't have a pick, because I'm coming here to repair them. That's what I'm doing. By the way, I'm trying to get materials from the Mesa biome, and I uh, need to repair my pick. And there you go. I guessed it. Fantastic. Let's put that back right there, and let's check out this rail line. So I think that's a returning line, and this is your outbound connection. Oh, yeah. I think Slipgator did this. This is one of his Slipgator woolly baiters. And uh, i got a press sign here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so then when we come back... I'm going to guess we go straight up there. That's very cool. Very cool. Alright, I got myself lots of hardened clay. It's for this shell right here. Doesn't that look cool? I like it. And we're at that stage now where I'm going to do loads of little building updates. I'm going to try and make them quick and brief and give you a nice view of this thing. As I've been building it, I've just been looking at the structure and thinking, that is ever so cool. So I have no idea uh, who made this or how they went about making it, but it looks so cool. Check this out. So uh, we've got some lime in here. What was that noise? Oh, you see, sometimes when I'm talking and I hear a mob noise, I think it's a creeper. You know, by default you think of the worst. And look at it, these guys are hanging around, being annoying. We've got a creeper as well, let's shoot that guy away. See you later. <laughs> yep, so that's the shape right there, it's nice and big, isn't it? We've basically got like a square shape on the inside, like a cube, that goes from the darker colour to the lighter. And then it kind of smooths out at the top to give a bit of a sphere feel. And then we've got this ring going around the outside that pops out. But now what we're going to do is fill this thing up with glass. And a moment ago, I swear there were no mobs around here. You start recording and they all come out, don't they? Okay, I've literally finished the glass with every last block that I had. You know, it takes so many journeys back and forth. And I thought I brought plenty of glass. I used it all down to every last block. That worked out nicely. So here it is from each angle. It doesn't look too impressive at the moment because there's not a whole bunch of slime blocks on the inside, which are going to make it look a lot more green. Uh, but it's starting to get the look. The next thing is to put in some terrain around the outside. What we're going to do is terraform the land up so that it kind of goes over the top and looks like a little bit of a hobbit hole. That's all I can describe it as. If you've seen some of the Lord of the Rings movies or artwork, you'll know that some of the Hobbit houses, they're kind of half underground, they have circular windows, and so that's what I'm kind of referring to. So, yeah, the next step is to start the terraforming. And I know some of you are going to correct me on it, it's not called terraforming, it's called landscaping, and we're doing it 
around the uh, outsides of this, so maybe you wouldn't even call it landscaping. Alright, the landscaping is done. I was about to say terraforming. There you go. It's even on all sides. That's something that I might change. Whoever built this, I think, used some world edit tools to kind of uh, recreate each side. You know, rotate it and paste it, that kind of thing, because they're all identical. And at the moment, it doesn't look too spectacular. I know. Wait until we put down some bushes. As always, those things giving our builds a lot of life. So we're going to put down some grass, long grass, and also some of these flowers if I remember correctly these are the lilac ones is that right lilac there we go and I think that's actually the correct pronunciation as well so I've got some bone meal with me we can obviously make all of the uh, grass that we need and we can get loads of those flowers and we're also going to put some bushes down as well and then it's going to look very very nice so yeah it's looking real good now isn't it and I've just realized as I hit record I've forgotten to do something and that is to put some oak leaves up in the top areas you can see them down the bottom but we do want a few up the top there as well and that's this thing overgrown and looking pretty cool now that we've actually built it I've got to say it really does stick out I wish I'd have built that maybe one or two blocks lower down but I think what's making it pop up and rise above everything is the fact that we've got the stone brick slabs highlighting where the bottom is so if we just pull a few blocks across like this I reckon this already would make a big difference but then obviously we've got to properly landscape it, not terraform it, um, down into this area here and on the other sides as well. So now when we take a step back, it does make it just feel a little bit lower to me having that dirt right there. So yeah, we've got some landscaping to do. It's about to say terraform again. I instinctively say that word every single time. So the landscaping, correct word. <laughs> Yeah, it makes a big difference, doesn't it? And at the moment, it's still growing back to grass, so it is a little bit obvious, but I think it looks all right. The torch spam is kind of ugly, and I've just been thinking about how this thing being built on the plot world, you know, it's always daylight on there, and so a lot of the time when you build stuff, you forget about lighting, and there isn't really a place to squeeze it in on this without it kind of popping out. We could put some torches on these edges, um, but for now, I think I'm just going to let myself ponder on it because this thing isn't going to be completed in the entirety today. Believe it or not, I've been playing this all day long and really trying to get this all finished. And somehow, every single time, I just I put my foot in it. I keep saying that. I need to stop saying that. But there's not enough hours in the day, basically. So anyway, now what we're going to do is fill this thing up with slime blocks and then technically it's ready to play. I think in another episode we'll do some more automation, like down below we'll have a water stream and hoppers to collect the slime blocks. But in the next episode I am hoping to round up a few friends here on the server and we can have a game. And it's going to be a lot of fun, we could have several games. But for now I've got to place in all of these slime blocks and I've got a feeling it's not going to be so straightforward. You see, I had a go at this already and it seems pretty... You know, easy at first, you've got to run run along, placing your blocks like this, you know, go on to the next row, and yep, there's a lot to place, but it's nice and fast, it's a little bit mindless. But then, then you've got to go on top of the slime blocks to do the next layer, and that's when things get interesting, because you move very slow on a slime block, even when you hold down sprint, and that means that placing the blocks is a lot slower. So what we might do is work our way from the top down with some scaffolding, that seems like the smartest thing to do, because... You know, when we're standing on stuff like this, it's just going to be so slow. So, yeah, I'm going to try and do this in the quickest way possible. I'm sure it'll be difficult, but let's see how it goes. What on earth is going on? I have enough slime blocks for this, I'm sure of it. I did the math. I really did. Maybe this thing is actually bigger. Aha! Aha! It's got to be bigger. Okay, so this is 12 by 12 and 8 tall. So, how many blocks is this? How am I going to know when there's one below me? Let's just try and guess. I actually think there's one more. And then that maybe looks like it. Okay, that's got to be the bottom. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that explains so much. Right as I go to record, I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute. I definitely did the maths right. Okay, so this thing is actually a little bit bigger than the test one that we made on the server. That's fine. We're still going to be able to play this. That's really cool. We can just all stand around the edges and drop in together, which will be a lot of fun. And then we can play a game of spleef. And as you saw there in the time lapse, I had to run away and go grab some more slime blocks. But the actual time I spent placing these down was nine minutes, which is a bit much. And with the entire thing done, it's probably going to come up to about 12 which was not what I uh, actually intended 
for, I guess. It would have been nicer if it was shorter, but I think for the occasional game, it's a fair amount of time, really. And, oh, I removed these slime blocks because I'm thinking, hey, let's just ender pearl out of here, but we don't have the ender pearls. So I'll come back in and remove this. It's like, uh, well, that wasn't very good, was it? A little imperfection in here that needs to get corrected. And, wow, these slime blocks are just so <laughs> annoying to work with. Uh, all right, let's get that sorted out. By the way, I decided to fill that up from the bottom upwards, as you saw in the time lapse. It wasn't that bad at all, actually. And with these slime blocks, if you start jumping around on them, you can move around pretty quickly. So that's pretty cool. And I was also thinking, if we're having four of us playing this, which is what I'm hoping to do in the next episode, redoing this thing would take about three minutes between four of you. So it's not so bad at all. And I'm probably not going to be able to get enough slime balls to fill up any more layers. It took an awful lot of time AFKing, doing other things uh, while AFK here on the server to get all of those slime balls. So it worked out pretty good in the end. I think this building looks awesome. Again, I have no idea who did this, but thank you very much. It looks really, really cool. All right, I had to cut away the end of the video there because I forgot to mention something very, very important. There is another video that you need to go and watch after watching this one. Me and Doc met up and we had our game here on the court. And Doc M published his video on it, so I want to encourage all of you to go over there and watch it. Let's see if we can do a shot on camera. We've had plenty of practice after playing with him today. And another rim shot. Well, if you go and watch the video, you'll know that why that doesn't surprise me. I have hit so many of these. Oh, I'm giving things away now. But anyway, yes, we had a game together. It was an absolute blast. And he unfortunately lost his footage, so I sent him over mine. And he was able to make a video with it, which was really cool. So be sure to go and check that out. There'll be a link on the screen and in the description box. But that is going to be it from me this episode. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like. It will be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time.